Oh, hey everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and today we're going to talk about a little bit of a lesson about After Effects. It's not really a tutorial, but today I'm going to teach you the difference between orientation and rotation. We're going to learn one of the important and more nuanced problems people run into in After Effects when trying to animate and rotate 3D layers and objects. The big thing is when do I use orientation? When do I use rotation? Why doesn't one keyframe the way I want it to? Why don't I have any ice in my drink? Contrary to popular belief, the orientation of a layer has nothing to do with whether it likes boys or girls, or boys who think they're girls, or any of those things. Let's get into After Effects. Okay, we're here inside of After Effects and I've got open the composition window and the timeline because we're really only interested in looking at these cubes I've created and the timeline. Now the cubes themselves are really just six layers, six layers that are squares. You know, they've got a stroke and a fill and they're arranged in a cube and one of the sides is red so we can tell when it's moving. Those aren't important to the tutorial. What is important is that 3D layers have rotation and orientation values, whereas two-dimensional layers, like this text, only have the rotation value, which you can bring up by hitting R. Now these cubes, however, because they are 3D layers, and I've uh, got all of the sides showing like a 3D object using the collapse transformations here, so that will show all the sides and we can observe it moving in 3D. Uh, when you hit R, you get orientation and one, two, three axis of rotation. Why that's interesting is that you would think, well, they seem to do about the same thing, right? So here they are spinning in one axis, you know, as this value here goes from 0 to 180, and this value here goes from 0 to 180. See? Woo! Just like that. They're rotating. And then same thing on the other axis. Yep, keyframe to keyframe, keyframe to keyframe, just like that. But there's a lot more going on here than I guess we know, because in these simple movements, when we're only going 180 degrees, 0 to 180, and really uh, what we've got going on is, is the same thing on each, then it's easy to get confused that these things have the same function. Well, they, they don't, and I'll show you why. Let's say we have on this orientation here, I'll just set the values down to zero, and I'll set these values down to zero, just so we're all on the same same page, and uh, make sure these are all regular keyframes. Move ahead a bunch of frames. What I would like to do is to have this go spin all the way around. Just spin this all the way from one side to another. So on the Z, this first value here is number of rotations, so 1, which is a whole 360 degrees, or you can just crank this value up to 360, and then it adds another 1, right? So this will now count from 0 up to 360 degrees, stopping there. If I want to do the same thing in orientation, I know the Z value, or Z to Americans, is this last one. So I'm just going to type in 360. Whoa, whoa, it just turned into a zero. What, what's going on? Well, that's because orientation looks at 360 degrees and zero as the same spot. Because if I've gone 360 degrees, I'm still orientated. Orientated? I'm still oriented the same way. I'm still facing the same direction. This gets us into a little bit of trouble when we start trying to do multiple things. Like, see, look, this thing's spinning. I put a keyframe here, and this thing's doing nothing. Well, that's got to be frustrating. How do I get it, how do I get this to do the same as this, right? How do I get the orientation to do the same thing as rotation? Well, one of the surefire ways is to push it along. And so let's, uh, mm -hmm. let's just move these out to be more evenly spaced, perhaps. So we know that here at the halfway point, this thing is at rotation value 180. So let's put this one at rotation value 180. So this will now go from orientation 0 to Z orientation 180. And then it'll go, oh wait, no, what are you doing? Uh, uh, oh, sorry. So we're trying to get it to go from 0 to 180 and then all the way back around. 
but it gets confused because it thinks the fastest way to go from 0 to 180 is to go just back down to 0. You know, it'll count backwards on you. What goes in between here? Well, 270 does, so we'll put that in. So there we go, that's not too bad. So we've got it going from 0 to 180 to 270 and then back around. And they seem to more or less go at the same time. And you know what, let's just put in a 90 here for good measure, because there's no telling what this thing might do. It might suddenly decide that, that going the other way is the quickest way to get to 180 or whatever, because it thinks it's so much smarter than you. Orientation will always try to find the fastest route to get from one position to another. Now, how does this manifest itself in other ways? Well, check this out. This thing is going to count from 0 all the way up to, instead of 1, let's just put 270 in here. What if as far as we want to go is 270 degrees? Well, on this one, let's mark that as 270. Same desired end state. But how does it get there? It takes the shortest distance. So instead of rotating from 0 all the way up to 270, it knows that the fastest way from 0 to 270 is rotating the other way 90 degrees. So that's what it's going to do. Rotation will go the long way. Rotation will go from 1 to 2 and so on until it reaches the number you've put in. Because rotation is like a cumulative number. Um, but orientation is just trying to seek out the next keyframe as fast as possible. And that's where a lot of confusion happens in orientation because if you start to use it in the same way that rotation is meant to be used, it's not going to work out for you. So rotation is sort of meant to be used to rotate the object, and orientation is to point it where it's supposed to be facing. So think of it like orientation is like aiming the object, and then rotation is doing things to it while it's already aimed in the right direction. Now, what this means, I guess, in terms of making something interesting, I've got a cube that kind of spins in and then kind of hangs out and bees weird and then kind of bees weird over there and, you know, and bees weird like this. But really, let's if we clear out a lot of these rotation things like this and then we can see the orientation alone is just moving around based on this this little expression wiggle 0.2 times a second 25 degrees which creates a nice even kind of movement now I could even change this to be uh, have that red side facing so what if that was like a logo or a title or something so it's always gonna have that facing us and then at certain points I would like it to do something interesting so I'll set a couple keyframes move ahead and have it spaz out a complete uh, rotation of some kind. So it goes a little blah, just like the YTV logo. Um, so you get the idea that that might be somehow interesting to people. Maybe. Ah, it's not very interesting to me. but So you can see by combining orientation, where it's facing, with rotation, what it's doing, we get sort of a, a way to better control action and create more interesting action. The reason that the uh, regular 2D layers don't need both of these because you don't need two competing rotations. When it doesn't have anywhere to point and then anywhere to change around that point, you know, there's no real point to, to doing that. But as you can see, because we have this, this axis here and we need more control over it, you know, because there, there are always these different functions that you need. Sometimes you do need it to point at things. Sometimes you do need it to just spin constantly on an axis. So the orientation and rotation have those different functions. So just like you can think of uh, orientation is in school, you know, when you go to orientation, you kind of just, you know, look around. They're kind of pointing you in different directions, but you're not really doing anything. I mean, orientation is a great time to meet cute girls and have that stupid conversation where you ask them what their major is in a pretext to neck behind the bleachers or whatever you people do. Really, orientation is meant to point the object in the right direction, and then rotation is meant to have it do things, which I guess that would make rotation the kegger of 
this analogy? I don't really know. Uh, I'm Evan Abrams. Hopefully you've learned a bit about rotation and orientation, and I didn't just bore the crap out of you. And even if I did, that's fine, because your boredom actually fuels me like a vampire. When I steal your time, I, I'm made stronger and way happier. Uh, that's, that's a joke. I'm not actually a time vampire, but that would be really weird. So thanks for watching. Uh, there will be more tutorials and... I don't know if this kind of lesson style thing is even useful to people, but if it is, let me know and I'll make more about other concepts in After Effects. I know it's a fairly basic thing, but I know uh, also some people out there are beginners and this is for them. So if it's not for you, just sit tight. I'll make something advanced and then you'll be like, oh, it's too hard. You know, no, you know, it happens. It happens a lot. It happens a lot to me. Um, whenever I teach courses or something, someone in class real smart, I'm like, hey, this let's get some advanced stuff up in here, and I'm like, yeah, I'll drop some science on you, boy. And uh, then I do, and then everybody cries, and then I'm not asked back to the university. So, uh, I'm Evan Abrams. Again, I'm going to keep saying my name just because I like it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more about After Effects. There will be a lot more of this stuff coming up in the coming months when I'm able to focus on it a bit more. If you have questions, comments, things you want to learn, tweet them at me, at EC Abrams. Uh, send me an email. Stop by evanabrams.com. Uh, or put in comments. Uh, tell me how much you hate this kind of thing. I love, I love that. And, uh, yeah, just uh, hope you have a good day. See you around the Internet. And uh, happy after-effecting.